Here's a video to help with solving right triangles. As I ask these questions about what you need to know, you should pause the video and ask yourself if you know the answer to the question. I'm not going to pause because I want you to pause yourself and I don't want this video to be so very long. So I've got to label these as letters. I'm sorry I didn't do that. What does it mean to solve a right triangle? It means finds all the missing angles and all the missing sides. Okay, as I look at this, I'm missing one angle and two sides. So when I have found the measure of angle A, the measure of side AB, and the measure of side BC, then I have solved this right triangle. Since I know one of the angles, one of the acute angles, I know all three angles add up to 180, then that means these two angles have to add up to 90 because 180 minus, excuse me, 180 minus 90 is 90, and these two have to add up to 90. The measure of angle A is 90 minus 16, which is what, 74? Let me type it in the calculator. It's a shame, isn't it, that I can't just think about that. Yep, 74. I didn't want to trust my brain. 74 degrees. So I found the missing angle. Now let's find the missing sides. To find missing sides and missing angles of a right triangle, you can use so ka toa. So I'm going to angle A, side A. I'm going to swap these. So sorry, I know it's going to take time on the video, but I want to be able to do this. Angle B, side B. So we were, yeah, angle A, A, C. So sorry. I should have known that to start with, A, C, and B, C. And it really doesn't make a difference, but I didn't want to call this side C when we call the hypotenuse C. I just didn't want to be confusing. Okay, so... Which one do I want to find first? Do I want to find AC first or do I want to find BC first? It is completely your choice. So I'm just going to go with AC. I want to find side B first. What do I know? I know this angle and I know this side. So in relationship to this angle, am I going to use sine? Am I going to use cosine? Or am I going to use tangent? I want to find this side, I know this side, and I know this angle. So do I know or have opposite and hypotenuse, adjacent and hypotenuse, or opposite and adjacent? B is opposite, 16 degrees, and 9 is the hypotenuse, so that's sine. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Theta is the angle measure. I do know the angle measure. The sine of 16 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now, always, always, always get rid of what is being divided. I'm dividing by 9, so get rid of dividing by 9 by multiplying by 9. B is going to equal... 9 times the sine of 16 degrees. And then you grab your calculator and you type in 9 times the sine, and you don't even have to hit the time sign, of 16 degrees. And that equals 2.5. Round to the nearest tenth, four is in the tenths place, eight tells me to add one to the four and make that 2.5. So this side is 2.5. B is 2.5. AC is 2.5. Now, to find BC, you could do the Pythagorean theorem, but I just, I struggle with using rounded answers to find other answers. I know this whole number is 16 degrees. I know this whole number is 9. So I don't like to use things that I have rounded. I just go ahead and use another trick ratio. I want to find A, and I know the hypotenuse. 
So is A adjacent to 16 degrees? Or is it opposite 16 degrees? Or is it the hypotenuse, which I just said 9 was the hypotenuse. So this is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Fill in what you know. Cosine, do you know the angle measure? Yes, 16 degrees. Equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is A, the hypotenuse is 9. Get rid of dividing by 9, by multiplying by 9. So 9 times the cosine of 16 degrees equals A. Grab your calculator. 9 times cosine 16 is 8.7. And you'll, those of you that do the Pythagorean theorem, you'll probably get that exact answer. But I do expect it to be exact. That if, if you're off a little bit, it is off. So please remember that you want to make sure to get exact answers. And this is more exact than rounding a rounded answer. Okay, so I have solved the first triangle. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So here is my next triangle. What is missing? Angle X is missing, side XY is missing, and side YZ or ZY is missing. So once I find all these, then I have solved my right triangle. As you look at that, you should see what is missing. Pardon me. As you look at that, you should see what is missing. Um, and I think I'll start with this. Since I know one of the angles, this other acute angle is 90 minus that. So 90 minus 47 degrees. Is that 43 degrees? I'm pretty sure it is. 10, 8, 9. Yes, 43 degrees. Now, I want to find either x, y, or x, z. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter what variable you put there. You put x and y. Okay, so which one do I want to find first? I think I'm going to find C first for some reason. So, I know 10, I know this angle, and I'm trying to find this. This is adjacent. This is the hypotenuse, which tells me that I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine, fill in what you know. The cosine of 47 degrees equals adjacent is 10 over the hypotenuse. Always, always, always get rid of what you're dividing by first. I'm dividing by C, so multiply by C. C times the cosine of 47 degrees is 10. I need to get C alone. How do I undo multiplying by the cosine of 47 degrees? I divide by the cosine of 47 degrees. So C is going to equal 10 divided by the cosine of 47 degrees. So 10 divided by the cosine of 47 is... 14, and look at this. I want to round to the nearest tenth. The six tells me to go up to seven, so 14.7. XZ, uh -huh. XY, oops, please forgive me. XY and XZ. XZ is 14.7. I hope you caught that when I was back there talking about it. I completely messed that up. I hope you saw that and thought, Miss Bib, you're at it again. Okay, now I need to find XY. I need to find this side. 
So I need to find this side, and I know this side. Let me erase this O and A, or A and H. So I'm using this angle. I want to find this side, which is opposite, and I know this side, which is adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. I'm going to use tangent. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. And today I had students say, trying to use the inverse. Remember, when you don't know the angle, that's when you use the inverse. And remember, the inverse is here. Inverse tangent, inverse cosine, inverse sine. You use those and press your second button when you don't know the angle. So when I do this tangent, do I know the angle that I'm talking about? Yes, 47 degrees. Angles are measured in degrees. What's the measure of the opposite side? A, I don't know. What's the measure of the adjacent side? 10. How do I get rid of dividing by 10? I multiply by 10. Always get rid of what's in the denominator first. So A is going to equal 10 times the tangent of 47. How do I know that I don't have to divide like I did over here? Well, is my variable alone? Over here, my variable was not alone. Is it alone over here? Yes, A is alone. That's how you know you don't have to divide. I can go straight to the calculator here. I can type 10 times the tangent, and you don't have to, have to hit the times button, of 47, and you don't have to close the parentheses, but I just do just because sometimes it needs to be closed. And round to the nearest tenth, so 10.7. A is 10.7. And again, you could use the Pythagorean theorem, but part of the reason of doing this is so you can use sine, cosine, and tangent. And so that's why I'm going to just continue to use sine, sine, cosine, and tangent. And also, part of doing this is um, learning how to use those functions. And I don't know what else I was going to say, but we'll just go with it. Okay, let's go to this one. Hmm, what am I missing? I'm missing angle C. I'm missing angle D. And I'm missing side ED. So once I have all those, I'm finished with that problem. So the easiest for me to find is going to be side ED because I know two of the sides. So I'm going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 441 plus B squared equals, and I, even I have to grab a calculator for that one, 5,625, subtract 441, Five thousand one hundred eighty-four. I don't think that's a perfect square, but it could be, so let's check. Second x squared, second x squared gives me the square root. I don't think you can see that for that glare. So it gives me the square root. And then I'm going to type in 5,184. Close the parentheses, don't have to, but I just get into the habit. It is, a, it is a perfect square. Look at that, 72. That's awesome. Didn't know that. And see, I, I wouldn't have thought it was. So B is 72. All right. So now I have all my sides. And I can't do 90 minus any angle because I do not know this one and I do not know this one. How do I find it? Well, remember, when you don't know the angle, you use the inverse. So let's start with one of the angles. Let's start with angle C since I put one arc on angle C. So from angle C, I have to either use so, ka, or toa. And since all of my sides are whole numbers, I didn't have to round this one. It was a perfect square. 
since all my sides are whole numbers, I can choose any of these. Now, I'm going to just go with what I was given, just so that could be consistent, just in case you do one and this is a decimal. So, and I would know that I can't use any of them if this is a decimal. So, I am going to look at this angle and look at what I was given. I was given this side and I was given this side. What are those sides? Are they opposite and hypotenuse, adjacent and hypotenuse, or opposite and adjacent? Well, I see both of these sides are touching, so they're both adjacent. This is the special adjacent side. It's the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the other adjacent side, so 21. So adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of my angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine, do I know the angle measure? No, I don't. So cosine of C is going to equal adjacent, which is 21, over hypotenuse, which is 75. So now, when you don't know the angle, use the inverse. Write this out so you can look this look back at this. So when you're doing this on your paper, write this out so you can look back, has something to look back at. So angle C is going to be inverse cosine of 21 divided by 75. So you grab your calculator and you do inverse cosine. Inverse is in yellow for me, light blue for you if you're using my calculator. So inverse cosine 21 divided by 75. So that is 73, I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, 73.7 degrees. That's what C is. Now, you could subtract from 90. You could do 90 minus 73.7 to find this other one. That's fine. I'm not going to because I'm going to use a trick ratio just so I can continue to show you how to do this. So now I want to find angle D. Ignoring this side that I, was, I found, what was I given in relationship to angle D? Well, this is still the hypotenuse. That didn't change. So I know I'm going to use one of these two. But 21, is it opposite? Or is it adjacent to this angle? Well, it's opposite, so I'm going to use sine. The sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of angle D, I don't know that. If it was a degree measure, I would put it in. Opposite is 21. The hypotenuse is 75. So I don't know the angle. I use the inverse. D is going to be inverse sine of 21 70 fifths. So you grab your calculator, you do inverse, and it's in blue for you, yellow for me, inverse sine 21 70 fifths, whoops, 21 70 fifths. And round to the nearest so that's 16.3 which if you did watch this we had 73.7 to start with if you do 90 minus 73.7 you get 16.3 so most of the time you will get exactly what I get because it didn't affect the rounded answer I just like to use exact numbers so I do both trig ratios. If you want to do 90 minus uh, angle C, perfectly fine. You, you would get the same answer. All right, so let's go to my top question. I'm going to number these, and when students ask questions in class, I'm going to say go look at that video and tell them what number to look at. That way they'll have help for their specific problem because you have to be able to do these on your own to be successful. All right, let me hold this paper so it's easier to see. All right, number four. Let me put letters. Okay, what am I missing? I'm missing angle L. I'm missing side JK. And I'm missing side KL. Once I find those, I'm done. Okay, so angle L. 
is 90 minus 18. 72? Yes, 72 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to call this side A and side B just so I can find them. And I can't do the Pythagorean theorem. I can't tell you how many students that I saw did this for um, finding a missing side. They did 18 squared plus 50 squared equals C squared. The degree measure cannot go into the Pythagorean theorem. You cannot do that. So make sure you fill in the right things to the Pythagorean theorem. You can only do the Pythagorean theorem when you know two sides, and we only know one side. Okay, so I'm going to find side A first. I'm trying to find this side, and I know this side. This is the hypotenuse because it's the side across from the right angle and I want to find this side. How do I find it? Am I going to use so? Am I going to use ka or toa? Well, we know the hypotenuse, so we're going to use one of these two. So is A adjacent to 18 degrees, or is A opposite 18 degrees? And hopefully you realize it's adjacent because it's touching 18 degrees. So I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Fill in theta. Theta is 18 degrees. Fill in the adjacent side. I don't know it. Fill in the hypotenuse. Now, how do I solve this? I get rid of what's being divided by. I'm dividing by 50, so I multiply both sides by 50. 50 times the cosine of 18 degrees equals A. Do I need to divide on this one? Because that was a question I got. Why didn't you divide this bib? Well, the answer to that is, is my variable alone? Yes. Then I do not need to divide. I just need a calculator. 50 times the cosine of 18 is 47.6 degrees. not degrees C. I made a goofy mistake. When you're uh, finding measures of sides, it's not degrees. It's just that measure. So A, which is JK, is 47.6 units, whatever those units are. Okay, so now I want to find side B. So in relationship to 18 degrees, I want to find this side, and I still know the hypotenuse. I want to find opposite, and I know the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use sine. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 18 degrees equals opposite is B. I don't know B. The hypotenuse is 50. What do I do? I multiply both sides by 50. B is going to equal... 50 times the sine of 18 degrees. Fifteen point five. I was about to put degrees on that, but I know it's not. It's a, it's a side measure. So fifteen point five. I finished number four. Number five. Let me put some letters. Uh, okay, what am I missing? I'm missing angle B, I'm missing angle D, and I'm missing side BD. And I wrote C. Side BD. I know two of the sides, so to find the third side, I do the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 36 plus 144 equals C squared. 
what is that? Was that 200? No, 180? No, I don't know. Yes, okay. Yes, 180. Take the square root. Since it says to round to the nearest tenth, I grab a calculator. Otherwise, I would write down the factors and simplify that. I don't want a decimal unless it asks for a decimal. So the square root of 180 is, and round to the nearest tenth, 13.4. So side BD is 13.4. Now, I need to find angle B or angle D. I don't know the angle, so I have to use the inverse. I don't know the angle, so I have to use the inverse. Okay, so let me see. I am going to uh, find angle B first. So I'm going to start with this one. What do I know in relationship to angle B? I know that side and I know this side. Is that so? Is that ka? Or is that toa? Well, do I know the hypotenuse? No, this is the hypotenuse. So it can't be either of these, it has to be toa. So the tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, tangent, I don't know theta, so that's angle B, equals opposite over adjacent. You could go ahead and reduce that to two also if you wanted to. And I think I will when I put it into my um, inverse. I don't know the angle, so I'm going to use the inverse. And I'm going to put two just because 12 divided by 6 is 2. You could type in 12 divided by 6 and it will give you the same answer. So inverse tangent. Mine is yellow, so I gotta press my yellow button first. Second tangent, so inverse tangent of two or 12 divided by six. And we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So 63.4 degrees. Angle B is 63.4 degrees. Okay. Now I'm going to erase, and I'm trying to find angle D. Opposite and adjacent. So again, I'm going to use tangent, because I didn't know the hypotenuse. So the tangent of angle D is opposite over adjacent. I don't know the angle, so I use the inverse. D is going to be inverse tangent, six divided by 12 or one half. You don't have to reduce it. You can leave it um, like it is. It does not matter. I'm just reduced it just out of habit. So inverse tangent of one half is 26.6 degrees. Which you could have done 90 minus 63.4 and giving you 26.6 degrees. Okay, one more. All right, now for number six. What am I missing? I'm missing side LM. I'm missing side NN. <laughs> My gosh. MN. And I'm missing angle N. Angle N is easy because I know the other acute angle. So 90 minus 52 is 38 degrees. Yes, so angle N is 38 degrees. Now I'm going to find LM first. Okay. Here's what I'm given. I know the hypotenuse the side across from the right angle. I know the hypotenuse. Let's find A first. Let's find LM first. So I want to find this side. Am I going to use so? Am I going to use ka? Or am I going to use toa? Which one am I going to use? I know the hypotenuse, so it's not this one. So is it adjacent and hypotenuse or opposite and hypotenuse? Hopefully you said adjacent. 
So cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine, what is theta? 52 degrees. The cosine of 52 degrees equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. How do I solve that? I get rid of whatever is being divided by. So I'm dividing by 3. I'm going to multiply by 3. 3 times the cosine of 52 degrees equals A. So I'm going to type that in and just write the answer above there. So 3 times the cosine of 52 is 1.8. Is that right? Yes, 1.8. And it's not degrees because I'm just finding the side. This is, LM is 1.8. Now let's find MN. I know the hypotenuse still, and I'm trying to find this side. So that's opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Fill in what you know. Sine of 52 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 3. 3 times the sine of 52 equals B. And then 3 times the sine of 52 is 2.4. I hope those will help you. I hope that you will actually watch this and use those examples to help you. It's a great way to study. Fast forward to where I had not done the problem, pause it, work it out yourself, and then see if you can get these answers. I hope you have a wonderful day.